Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Experimentation, Ruben here. Listen, you guys know how much I love the short-term rental space. It's been one of actually my favorite guests I've had on my show, especially as an investor myself. Now, as an investor and digital marketer, I can tell you that in 2021, what is most important for every host is to establish and build your own brand. See, while Airbnb.com and Booking.com and Expedia which we call OTAs are good, they're not necessarily gonna take your business to the next level. Or if it currently is, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. That is because the majority of hosts are not establishing their own platform, their own websites where your guests can book directly through you. If you understand anything about business and marketing, is it is the ability to control a list, to have control of that list. You do not have that kind of access and control when you're relying on other OTAs. So the best and easiest way to do this is by working with Boostly. See, Boostly, Mark actually have had him in the lab in episode 130. And the thing is they built their website specifically for folks in the short-term rental space. And they built that on a WordPress website. See, 64% of all websites in the world are powered by WordPress. While the PMSs that you may have currently are offering you free sites, they're not built on WordPress. Now, Boostly also works with your existing PMS. And it doesn't matter if you're a host of one property or a hundred, they can start anywhere from 99 pounds. They've helped over 600 clients worldwide and it is so important that you tap into what they're offering and schedule a consultation call with Mark and his team at Boostly so that you can start leveraging and building your platform so you can start getting direct bookings to skyrocket your business. It's really important that you do this and start building your own brand and that you're in control of your direct bookings for your business. So if that's the case, make sure you book a call at boostly.co.uk forward slash epic that's boostly.co.uk forward slash epic and make sure that you schedule a call with mark and his team at boostly so that you can start getting your direct bookings for your short-term rental business we'll see you on the other side Real estate experiment, what is happening y'all? Today, I have the pleasure of having another brother tie close to our network, Mark Simpson. Welcome to the lab. You're gonna need an introduction, so I just want you to just connect right now because we're gonna, we're gonna level set here. Mark, where are you dialing in from and welcome to the lab? How's it going, my friend? Well, firstly, thank you for having me. I'm a big fan. You know, I've been indulging in, in, in all the content and I was chatting to a pair about one of the interviews that I absolutely love it. So thank you for, for having me. So uh, my name is Mark Simpson. I run a company called Boostly. I've been in hospitality since five years old. Um, and now I'm very, very, very fortunate that I get to do podcasts like this and, and help hosts all over the world. My, my big goal is to help 1 million hosts by 2040. Um, and what I'm doing is I give hosts the tools, the tactics, and the training to increase their own bookings, get their own heads on beds. So we don't have to rely on Airbnb booking Expedia to do so. And, you know, it, it, the, the tools is web design, the tactics and the training is, is coaching podcasts, blogs, books, and, and, and yeah. And, and ever since there's this cool app called clubhouse, we've been able to connect and, and sort of here, here we are. So yeah, I'm five years into this journey. I've got over 1000 clients all over the world. I live in Spain. I'm this dodgy accent is definitely not Spanish. It's, it's, it's a, it's a British accent. I'm from a very small town called Scarborough in, in the coastal area of, of the UK. And yeah, so me and my wife and my three children have been traveling all over the world since 2017 now. So we've got a Wi-Fi and a microphone and, and a laptop. Um, yeah, I'm able to do awesome podcasts like this. So thank you for having me on. 
Oh, absolutely. And I got to build on that because, you know, as humble as they come, Mark, another, you know, another uh, stud in the lab with us. Um, first of all, if you're not following him on Clubhouse, you definitely make sure you're following him on Clubhouse. That's how I got to be able to get in touch on social media. But, you know, Mark, I mean, you're an author, you're a podcaster, you're a founder of Boostly, which I think is one of the coolest companies ever because here in the lab, we love digital assets, which is a new segment we're actually launching, uh, which I'm excited about. But you're also a practitioner, right? You you, you talked about this where we were offline. I want to hear about it. You talked about how you and your wife are running uh, the, the hospitality, like boots on the ground, like literally. And now you've taken it on, you've helped over a thousand hosts get more bookings. And, and, and another thing is, is you're literally providing tools. And this is what this podcast is all about. It's about all these experiments, whether good or bad, and we double down on the good and we stay away from the bad. And you're able to actually provide these practical steps that can help people get direct bookings, which is really interesting and more. But I want to focus on that because we don't talk about it enough. But before we get there, we're going to take a step back. You know, you, we talk about, I always say this on every podcast. I believe you're a reflection or a business a reflection of who you are as a person. So I think it's important that we get some context. When we were all offline, you talked about how you and your wife were running the hospitality business and you wanted some free freedom lifestyle business. So you created Boostly the way you had envisioned and with pure intention. So give us a little bit of a background and context yeah. into your, you know, if it gives you the goosebumps or not, because I know what you've created is just amazing. What was it like before then? And give us a little bit of an idea of why you created Boostly and how that was a solution to maybe scratching your own itch. Let's yeah. get right into it. No, definitely. So like I said at the start, I, I was pretty much born into hospitality. I grew up on a 200 acre farm stay, bed and breakfast in the middle of nowhere in, in, in the United Kingdom. And this was around the 90s. And this is when there was a, a crisis happening. There was a foot and mouth crisis happening. And so many farms were going out of business because of the, the foot and mouth crisis. So my family, my mom and dad had a, an amazing foresight of changing a barn into a four bedroom bed and breakfast. And because it was the early 90s, it was very new to do this. The whole farm stay thing was very, very new. Now it's common. You can go anywhere, any country will be a farm stay element in some way, shape or form. But back then it, it was new and there was no internet. There was no booking.com or Airbnb or Expedia. There was no Facebook, social media. They literally had to promote and advertise the business through newspaper, advertising, um, magazines, and word of mouth. That's it. But it was really popular because it was in the middle of nowhere. Scarborough and Whitby, for those who don't know, is the second most visited area in the UK after London. It's so popular. It was the first ever coastal town in the UK. And this we're going back many, 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 many years here. Um, the thing about Scarborough as well is that one in every three businesses is a hospitality business, whether it's a hotel, a guest house or a rental property. So it's very common for tourists to come. And so they were able to expand on that. And I was growing up in this time. People were always in the house. You know, there's always somebody in my kitchen. You know, I'm just used to it. And as a teenager growing up, I was wanting to do one thing that all of my friends had a common common goal here was to escape. We were in the middle of a small little town. We wanted to escape, we wanted to see the world. And my big passion is soccer. I'm a massive Liverpool football nice, fan. Nice, okay. And I wanted to be a footballer. I want to be a soccer player more than anything. The one problem, I'm not very good at football, not very good at soccer, <laughs> but I could coach it. So I got all my coaching qualifications. The, the, the farm business was getting really, really popular. You know, I, I earned my travel money by working in the, in, in the, in the bed and breakfast, you know, doing the beds, doing the breakfast, you know, it was expanding. It grew from four beds to 14 beds. They put on a little cafe, little tea rooms in there, a restaurant, you know, it was getting popular. And then in 2002, I got the opportunity to go to America. Loved it. I, I, that's what got the, 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 the travel bug in me. So for, for seven years, I was going into America for five months on my H1 visa back in the UK for seven months. When I was in the UK, working on the farm, working in da-da-da-da, then over to America. And I got to travel to every state. It was phenomenal. I had an amazing time. And that was the travel book. What kind, of work, what kind of work were you doing, Mark? Uh, you said h one I know all about that. I'm an immigrant. So what kind of work was, was allowed so you to kind of soccer, come over to the Soccer US? coaches, soccer camps, you know? Oh, so no kidding. Youth development um, started off in Tennessee, um, did Alabama, you know, all of the, all, all of, all of the day South, you know, did all of the Northeast, um, spent a lot of time in California, Los Angeles, fell in love many times in California, nearly got my green card, but wasn't to be. And then I came back to England 
came back to England and my buddy was just finishing uh, university college and he said, listen, I want to go traveling. And I was like, yeah, let's go. You know, without even telling me, it was like, let's go. So we booked a one-way ticket to, to Bangkok, to Thailand. And that one-way oh. ticket turned to two years. So we're on the other side of the world in Australia. Um, I, I had to do a lot of hospitality work in Australia because, you know, we ran out of money. <laughs> and uh, it, yeah, it was, it was, wherever I was, I was always falling back in hospitality. And then in 2009, we came back to England. Me and my same friend traveled the world with, we were sat in a pub, I'm like, where, where's next? And so we just did what everybody would do and we went to London. So we just basically Dick Whittington style on the train down to London. And that's when I fell into sales and marketing. And this is an important part of the story because over the next two years, I was working at Yelp. It was Quipe at the time and then it got, it got bought by Yelp. And I was basically doing their sales and their marketing. So I, I learned everything that I needed to know about social media. So Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, Instagram was becoming a thing, you know, um, this is the emergence of review websites. So TripAdvisor, you know, and, and uh, booking.com is there, Airbnb is starting to get a bit of popularity. And at the same time, my parents are still running their same business 25 years in, and I'm one of four. So I'm the eldest of four. All my siblings are younger than me. And at this point, it's 2012. I just had my first child um, about to get married. And me and my wife had an amazing opportunity to go back to the family business, to live there and run it with my parents. And we, we, we did it. We, we took it. And my sort of role, my sort of self role that I assigned to myself was to get the business online. There was no website. There was no social media. There was no nothing. It was still relying on word of mouth. But the problem if having a business solely on word of mouth after 25 years is that people start to die. People start to not be able to travel. You know what I mean? So sure. the same guests are, you know, can't travel. So I, my job was to take that offline word of mouth and put it online. And I just put those tactics that I learned in London and at Yelp with SEO and all the things. I just put it into this business and it went so well, like ridiculously well. Within 18 months, we had grown to be the top three rated business on TripAdvisor in, in, in the area. We had the most followers on social media, on Facebook, in any other independent business nearby. And people were recommending us not only offline but online you could go on any local facebook group you could go on any any sort of social platform in the area and you could see people talking about us we we grew from uh, just bnb to rental accommodation as well we had a wedding license events it was all there we, we grew and then in 2017 we decided as a family put the business up for sale because it grown to the point my fam my parents were ready for retirement age and like, like I said, me and my wife wanted to travel. So we did what we set out to do. We set up to grow it. And in 2017, um, I started to go to local um, networking meetings in the area. There was other hosts, bed and breakfast, hotel, rental hosts going to these meetings. And I was like alarmed at the conversations that were happening because they were all complaining, saying they weren't getting bookings. If they were, they were coming from the OTAs, booking.com, wherever. And you know, the guests weren't as nice as what they wanted to be. And I just said at the meeting, you know, I normally kept myself to myself. And I said, well, what are you doing to get your own bookings? You know, you, it's, it's the problem that we all have. You all think that we're all doing the same thing. We're all doing exactly the same thing in our little business because we're stuck in our little ways. And they all looked at me and said, well, nothing. I said, well, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing email, Facebook? No. So I said, well, okay. And then I just said, well, how about this? One night after evening meal, how about you all come around to, to our business and I will show you a couple of things that I'm doing. I'll get my laptop and I'll show you what I'm doing. And five people put their hand up out of a hundred people. And those are the first five people I ever taught. And I showed them Facebook. I showed them email. I showed them Google. I, sh I showed them a few things that they could do to get more bookings. And I loved it. It was, this is like my new passion. It's like taking the coaching from the soccer and the hospitality and just merging it together. And you know, that's, sparked the idea you know i sparked the light bulb and i said to my wife i said i'm going to look to see if anybody else is doing this and nobody was there was a couple of agencies but they were charging ridiculous amounts of money there were a couple of coaches but they were just talking really outdated stuff and i was like well sod it i will do it i will i will do this and you know i created boothly i created a facebook group called the hospitality community it's, it's you know it's one of the biggest and the most engaged groups to this day over 5,000 members 92 percent engagement and you know, it's just, it's bananas. I created a business to help local business owners. And before I knew it, there were people from all over the world wanting to join. And there were people from all over the world who 
what needed this advice because they were fed up of having to rely on third parties to get bookings or they just didn't know where to start. And, you know, what started as those five people, like I say now, five years later, um, over a thousand clients, we've got the Boostly podcast, you know, there's the book and it's, it's, it's crazy. And it's grown through the exact same tactics that I used to get the granary online. And I just replicated for Boostly and, you know, I've, I've coached, business owners from all over the demographics from every walk of life. And it's, it just replicates and works really, really well. And it's just utilizing social media, putting it together with some really good email marketing and just putting yourself out there. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to be honest. I'm getting the goosebumps. I'll stop it. Stop it, Mark. <laughs> I'm getting the goosebumps. Okay. So I, I, there's so many gems that you, you planted that I, I want to highlight in the lab, as you guys know, we're always taking notes. Why? Because we like to learn from practitioners, but there's always, a, there's always, there's gems that are left in here. So first of all, what I love is, and I think it's really important for everybody to listen to this is, is you went to a company, you learn, you extracted that data and then you implemented into a, an avenue that worked for you. And I think that's just so important because thing that's really you know hot right now to talk about entrepreneurship screw that and then you know you know, leave your job it's like like there's just value to be grabbed anywhere you go in your business there's problems to solve that if you solve them you can help other people in your, maybe your nine to five if you're working somewhere you can take that information and implement it because again corporations started as entrepreneurs with one or two people and then they grew like people don't realize that like all oh, corporate corporate a corporation is literally just entrepreneurs who built systems and then scaled that's what you're that's where you're on your way to doing you're, you're helping people from all all across the world you, you literally said you started locally and now it's bigger than you which mm. for me just gives me the goosebumps i love hearing that but so let's talk about that you took you extracted the sales and marketing that you learned that you own and you took it in and what i love that you said you took an offline word of mouth to online you said you had a lot of success Success leaves trends. What do you think at a high level? I know there's many pieces. Everybody wants that one secret thing. I don't think it's one. I, I know I could, implementation is a lot of things, but what do you think at a high level when you think of like the blueprint, the map that you had that helped that success transcend into your industry so smoothly? And maybe it wasn't so smoothly, but what, you know, what, what, what do you think was effective that helped make that transition a success at a high level? Oh, well, yeah, I love this question. And because what I can do is I can give everybody actionable advice as well. So this is actionable advice that anybody tuning in can, can put into practice right now into their business. So it's, 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 it's really effective. It's really simple. It doesn't cost any money. And for those of you that have got um, hospitality businesses, and when I say hospitality, people always go either one or two ways. Yep, that's me. Or no, I'm not. And they go, I'm in property. I'm in property. I'm not in, I'm not in hospitality. As soon as you get somebody walk into your one of your units and they are staying in one of your houses, you are in my world. You're in hospitality. I don't care what you're saying. You're no longer property guy or real estate guy. You are yeah. in my world, hospitality. And we are in an industry like no other. I said it. You get strangers staying in your house. Like whatever, or a house that you're looking after, what other other business and is, is out there? So we have got an amazing opportunity to build on that, and we are in an industry that is unlike any other because people look forward to doing business with us. They look forward to going on vacation. They look forward to going somewhere else. They look forward to doing something new. And if you, you look at the situation right now, I, all over the world, people have got different restrictions, lockdowns or whatever. There's one thing that I guarantee is happening is that people are planning. They are planning for when they can travel. There is a thing coming called revenge travel. And whether you like it or not, you are going to be so ridiculously busy. It is untold because we are in an industry that the demand is so high. You can look at your calendar. You can look at your reports for the last couple of years, or you can look at the ones coming up. You can look at the dates and you can pinpoint dates that you know that you could sell two, three, four, five times over. Now, how was it that we were able to grow so quickly? Well, we took that offline word of mouth, the thing that people love, because at the end of the day, when someone has a good experience, they tell two people. When they have a crap experience, they tell 10 people how bad it was because of social media, da, da, da. But I like to focus on the two. And what that means is, 
they have a good stay. They have a good stay. They go back, they're sat in the office or we're on social media and they go, oh, did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. What, what, what was the place of the name? They give the name. That's how they tell their two people. Or they go on social media and, and they talk about you, social media posts and whatnot. So we just took that and we brought it into our world so we could control it. Um, there's, there's a couple of things that you can do, but one of the simplest things is just ask. The amount of people that would kindly talk about you online, but don't because you don't ask them. And what is an ask? Asking for a review. The most simplest one possible. And this is a tip that everybody can do, but nobody does, which is bananas to me. And I think we, we, we were the first to do it, but let's see. Back in 2014, there was a thing called QR codes. QR mm -hmm. codes are now common everywhere. You know, these phones now mm -hmm. are so up to date. You can literally hover your phone over a QR code. It'll take you exactly where you need to go. And with COVID, QR mm -hmm. codes are actually becoming common practice. You go into a restaurant now. Yeah, menus is one, X, Y, and Z. They are so common. Back in 2014, they weren't. But the software, the software was there to make it work. We had a 14-bedroom guest house. We had free holiday cottages. Think about the amount of doors and touch points that your guests, our guests were having in our, our property. And one of our key hacks that we did is we put a QR code on the back of every door. Mm. We put a QR code on the back of every door with a lovely little laminate, a lovely little sign next to it saying, leave a review. Please leave a review. Leave, go, go leave your review on whatever channel we wanted to grow. So our goal was to get to the top three on TripAdvisor. The only way that you can hack the system and hack the algorithm is by getting tons of review in a short space of time. Now, we just put go leave a review and we put the QR code and it was TripAdvisor. So the branding was there. So they knew TripAdvisor. And, and bearing in mind, TripAdvisor might not be as big now as what it was. But in 2014, it was everything. If you were going to go in any vacation, you were going to go check the hotel or wherever you were going to stay. You'd go to TripAdvisor. You wouldn't go anywhere else. So we would give a put a QR code on the back and say, go leave a review. Good or bad, leave a review. And then what we would do, because you have to dangle a carrot, you can't just ask, you've got to dangle a carrot. So we would give an incentive. So we say, listen, good or bad, leave a review every month. We do a prize draw to win a two night stay at here. Simple. So we're given a reward, dangling a carrot. And because it's because TripAdvisor is so easy to do, they can leave a review as they're literally walking from the bedroom to breakfast or from the bedroom to outside. And they can do it on the phone, tap, 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 review left, review done, and it's sorted. Now, if you compare that to when everybody normally asks for review, you normally get it once you've left. Now, we are naive to think that as soon as a guest leaves our property, gets in a car, drives home, that all they're thinking about is us, the amazing time that they've had. As soon oh. as they get in the car, the real world hits, bills, work, Boom, 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 boom. So if you send an email 24 hours later saying, please leave a review, you just get added to the list of stuff that they've got to do after coming back from a vacation or wherever. So by asking at and during the stay, while they're chilled out, while they've got all the time in the world, they are 10 times more likely to leave that review. And this is how we were able to gather so many amazing reviews in so many short space of time, because as well, once they're at the property, whilst they're in the property, we're all they can think about. We are top of mind. They are loving it. We just simply adapted our message, adapted that QR code. At one point, we created a, a hashtag, hashtag farmy. This is when Instagram was getting really popular. Hashtag farmy means a selfie on a farm. We created the hashtag and all that we were doing, again, same tactic on the back of every door. We said, take a picture, take your favorite picture whilst at the property or whilst in around in a local area, upload it to Instagram, put hashtag farmy, come to the bar, I'll give you a free drink. And it was it, the dangling the carrot, the, the free drink. You know, we said anything except alcohol because people would have gone crazy because Brits are crazy on the alcohol, but they loved it. They took part, they loved it. And as well, our social media grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And that is how we were able to take that amazing offline experience online. And that, that is one of the core simple things that anybody anybody can do because it's free a qr code is free you know you just have to pay to get some laminated but that costs nothing oh my gosh this is like i i, I love how it's it's almost it's not that it's obvious it's not the point It's what you said when you began talking it's that it's simple and anybody can do it but again mm -hmm. the, the the key thing here is uh 
most people aren't going to do this. Uh, and if you're listening, don't be that person because this is free game here. Like Mark mm-hmm. Sim, like Mark Simpson is giving you guys the blueprint. And I'm, I'm even like thinking like I was, as you're saying, I'm thinking about my, okay, wow. Like this is what we got to do. So that is great because that's an actionable step that people can take right there. And I love that. I want to go to something that you're talking about now. And, and, and you mentioned that before TripAdvisor was really on, what is actually right now a relevant, uh, I guess, place you would say now, again, if you're listening to this, it's February, 2021, February 15th here. Uh, what is the new TripAdvisor? And then we'll get to the OTAs. Cause I want to talk about that in a yeah. second. So, so what, what do you to send people to now is Google. Google, Google, all day long. Google business listing. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the rival to TripAdvisor, but it's, you know, it's not even comparison. Google just dominates all. Everybody has to. This is another big tip for 2021. You have to treat Google like your homepage. It's the beginning and the end of a customer journey, you know, and um, it's so important. So send everybody to your Google business listing. And if you haven't got a Google business listing, you are going to get left behind. It's free to create. You can create them for all of your properties. Don't make the mistake that so many make and just create it for your business, your brand business name, whatever that may be. Get them for every single individual unit that you own because it's going to be so important that you do so. The powers and the tools of Google business listing are insane. And once you get access to the dashboard and to the insights, it is going to blow your mind how many times your business actually gets seen on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. So yeah, Google business listing, and it's free which is cool. Mark, I, I, I want to make sure this doesn't slip through the cracks. So you did mention that. I want to make sure we don't lose this one. You mentioned that uh, don't just do it for your business name, but are you saying for every listing? Is that what I heard? Like, let's say your, your portfolio. Unit, of every big... property. Yeah, okay, every great. Place you've got, every place you've got. Now, the, the, the hack to this, and again, this is a hack that everybody can do. So um, how many properties you've got, whether it's one, two, four, or hundred. Now, don't just give your properties a very um, bland name, for example, two high street or 44 and the name of the street it's on. You've got to give each unit its own personality, its own brand. Like for example, our cottages that we had on the farm, it was Primrose and Cowslip and Foxglove. They were local plants in the area. Now the trick because of this is that when somebody goes and recommends your property or they go, you know, top of mind and maybe do a Google, Google search or whatever, they're going to Google that. They're going to check it out. They're going to do that search. And so when they do that search, your business will come up in that Google map pack that you see. So when you do a search on Google now, it's normally the paid ads at the top, then the map pops up, and then you've got boom, 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 boom underneath. So by doing that, your business will show in there. But you give it your individual property name, unit name, whatever that may be. Then in brackets, you put the brand in. So ours would have been Primrose Cottage, brackets, the granary. That's the overall branding. So what happens is is that that's the brand recognition coming up over and over and over again, because what will happen, and this happens so much with Airbnb, specifically to people that have got numerous properties, like a portfolio, maybe 5, 10, 15, 20, they'll land on your Airbnb listing, okay? And they'll just think that you've just got that one listing because that's what the stipulation, that's like, that's like the, the, the misconception of Airbnb is. It's just one person, one unit, but really you've got 15 or 20 or 100. So what you should be doing as soon as possible, and we're talking more like hacks into the listing sites, which we'll delve into more, but it's you've got to get in as soon as possible in brackets or just somewhere, your overall business brand and name. Because what then it will say is, hang on a second, this is, these have got a portfolio. So if it, this isn't available, how do I go and find the whole portfolio? They bounce back to Google. They type you in, in the area that you are, where, wherever you are in the world. And that's then how they can delve back into like you and booking direct. So there's loads of things we, we, we can delve into. Oh my God, it's getting too good, Mark. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited right now, guys. Keep your hands on the wheel. We have every, everything in the show notes if you're listening to this while you're driving. But one thing I have you here on, we, we, we talked about it. First of all, I just have to 
I have to say this on the air because you, you said this offline and I just respect so much of what you've created. And I'm actually so inspired because you found a way to blend in. Not only are you having an impact on people, you're in real estate, you're in hospitality, but you're also on the marketing side. And for me, that's like what I love, just bringing out together. So I just wanted to put that out there. Like, I just think what you're doing with, with, with Boostly, first of all, the brand name and everything's come together so well. And I'm just admiring uh, you from a distance because right now you're in, oh, keep me honest, Javier. Javier, yeah, Javier. Javier. Uh, and, and again, in addition, you've obviously built a lifestyle business, which I admire. That's in a lot of us, that's what we're optimizing for. A lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs in business. So tap into Mark Simpson here. He's onto something. If you haven't already realized, I'm fully plugged in, but I want to get back to the point. Well, before you and I spoke offline, we're like, okay, hey, you know, what, what, there's so much to talk about. One thing that I want to highlight is let's talk about OTAs for a second. And for those who are not familiar, uh, that's the, um, uh, I'm trying to, which OTAs, that's Airbnb, that's booking.com. That's the, yeah. you've heard those, right? They're travel agents, online, online travel online agents. Travel that's what that stands for. Yeah. Like, what does the O stand for? I'm like struggling here. Online yeah. travel agents. So that's what we know. We've heard of it, Airbnb, et cetera. People are building some really profitable businesses off those things, but there is, a caveat. And this is, this is where I want to bring you in as the expert because Boostly is about booking direct. And to our listeners, you might be listening, well, why do I need to book direct? Or why should I even consider that if I already have my Airbnb listing and I'm a super host, I'm going to get all that. Mm. Let's bring that together. And because I think it's really important. And I don't even think that that many people know if you've been in the industry like yourself, you know, the importance, but some of our new uh, you know, short-term rentals, vacation rental people who are leveraging all these other applications, it might not even occur to them. So why don't you, we heard it here first, tell the people why it's important for us to maybe have both, if not try to pivot towards your own. I want to hear what your, mm. your, your insight is on that. I want to hear from the man himself. Cause that's actually part of my question. I want to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. Why not well, OTAs and why booking direct? Talk to me. First and foremost, and I, and I think when I talk about this, it's very easy to assume that I am Mr. Anti-OTA. You know, you should come off all the OTAs and you should only book direct. That is not the case. Yeah. But what I've got to stress here, and I've really got to, really got to hammer home, and I say this to a lot, a lot of people, and um, a lot of the podcasts and the interviews that I've done recently, I've, I've emphasized this because it is important and it's applicable to every business, not just hospitality. Now, I do have to caveat this by saying, I do website design, I do coaching, we do podcasts, you know, all of the things. There is no website in the world that you can create a business in this industry, website design, that you can list your services on and you are guaranteed to get income. It doesn't work. So in hospitality, we are very fortunate that we can open up a business, open up a unit, get pictures, get words together, put it up on Airbnb, Verbo, booking.com, et cetera. You are pretty much guaranteed, as long as you get everything right, to get income coming in. The problem with that is that you get lazy. The problem is that is that because it is so easy, you get lazy and then you stop doing what everybody else has to do. Grind, hustle, market, 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 do all of the things to get income coming in. And when you get lazy, you stop doing it and then you start to over rely. And when you over rely on one channel to bring in all of your income, all it takes is a fan off snap. Like my, one of my favorite movie franchises is Avengers, Marvel. I absolutely adore it. Infinity War. What happens at the end? He gets all of his Infinity Stones. He gets his gun on. He clicks his finger. Half of the universe disappears. That is a metaphor for your income. And I've been saying this for years. Since 2017, I've been saying this. And I've been saying, listen, you cannot build your house on someone else's land. It will just never ends well. And the problem was that everybody was going, yeah, Mark, we get it, we get it. But at the same time, money's coming in, income's coming in, booking's coming in, they're super busy. They'll go, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And I say, listen, anything, anything could happen. Airbnb could shut down your listing. It could be a guest complaint, blah, 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 blah. They kept saying, 2018, Mark, I'll come around to it. 2019, Mark, I'll get to it. Then 2020 happened. We all know what happened in 2020. Nobody needs to remind you what happened in 2020. But March, the end of March 2020, something happened, which unfortunately my point was proven. And I didn't think that a global pandemic was going to, was going to uh, result in this. But on one morning in March 2020, every single Airbnb host woke up 
to the exact same notification message that every single guest who had a booking on that platform to say, you can cancel your stay free of charge. It doesn't matter what the policy is. You can cancel it today and you will get your money back. Now, the problem with that is that we, as the host, got no prior warning. We had got no indication that this was coming. They just put it out to everybody. Cancellations were coming in left, right, and center. And I have spoken to far too many hosts that lost a lot, a lot of revenue and money that day. That is the problem when you build your house on someone else's land. That is the problem. And I've spoken to people that 95% of their income relied on Airbnb. It was shocking. And they weren't the only ones. Booking.com, everybody else did exactly the same. Now, I have to also say, because this is what some people come back to me at. They say, well, just because guests book direct doesn't mean that they didn't cancel. Absolutely not. But you've got one thing. You've got power. You have got the power to pick up the phone call because it's on your policy, your turns, pick up the phone, call up the guest and say, Ruben, I totally get it. You, you know, world's gone upside down at the moment. Your stay is coming up with us. Listen, we're super vulnerable right now. We're losing a lot of money. We really want you to come and stay with us when this all reopens. So if you can, and the money's in your budget, can you just change and not cancel? Let's move it to November, October, 2022, whatever, 2021, whatever it may be. Some said yes, some said no, but there's one thing that you get is that's the power. And that's when you build a house on someone else's land. And this is why in 2017, when I started this journey, I put a really ridiculous goal of helping 1 million hosts increase their direct bookings by the end of 2040. And the reason being is that my big goal, my big aspirational goal is to get the OTAs to drop down their commission to 10%. At the moment, it starts at 15% goes up. Secondly, is I want them to give us more power, i.e. more data, as in we get the real email address. There's no interference in that. And, all, and the last thing is I want them to treat us more like the partners that they say they do. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I stood on my little plinth, my little social media platform at the granary, trying to talk about the benefits of booking direct, me by myself, I would get nowhere fast. But if I can help 1 million hosts get re-educated with little tips like I shared and I will share so much more, then if 1 million hosts can then educate their guests and say they get 1,000 guests a year, that's powerful. That's when we increase the direct booking movement. That's when we get a foot at the table at these OTAs, and that's when we'll be able to start to do something. So this is why it's important, because I never want what happened last year to happen again, and I can see it having an effect. What We, we do website design. Our business, Boostly Website Design, grew 200% last year. And a lot of it was Americans. A lot of it was Americans and Canadians who had just had this affiliation, affiliation with Airbnb because it's out of San Fran, because it's America and all the thing. But they realize, they go, well, hang on a second. It's all well and good, me loving Airbnb. But I've got to think smart now. I've got to make sure that I'm multi-platform. I've got my own systems and things in place where I start to use Airbnb as a marketing channel and not my bread and butter. So that's why it's important. Wow. I, and, and I want to uh, piggyback that because I think you, you you said it so eloquently, Mark. And, and it reminds me, if there's some of us listeners who are in the digital marketing space, for example, and you guys know anything about digital marketing, it's very similar to what Russell Brunson always talks about, right? In Traffic Secrets, if you're into that, the trilogy mm. and all that. It's it's really being in control of, of, of your business. I, I love how you say it, building your business on someone else's land. These are digital assets, right? And you're building on someone else's and they have their own rules. And we talk about this all the time with like people's businesses being shut down overnight because like, oh, we'll just, and I've been in the space, but in the e-commerce space, we used to have six figure ads. Like it was ridiculous. If they decide, hey, yeah, this is not non-compliant, they can shut your business down like overnight. Like you wake up to exactly what Mark just said and it's shut down. So it's, it's, we don't really think about it until it comes up, but I think it's important that we always say in business, build your list. And one thing that you highlighted that's really important is like on these OTAs, like you don't have control of that person's information, like their birthdays or when, when, you know, their age or, you know, uh, let alone their name only gets disclosed after they book, right? You don't have their email. So there's no way of, of you keeping them in and, and controlling and giving out giveaways, gifts, like all the whole nine yards. So I think it's really important what Marcus 
thing because we've seen it in other industries and because you know digital assets is is what we're building in addition to the tangible one or the physical one right but the hospitality i think it's really important that and mark is bringing this point home that you really start getting in control and have power over that list and i and i love how you said that mark i couldn't agree more so so now that we're there uh all right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about tactically what that looks like. Because if I'm listening right now, I'm like, dang, like, you're right. Like, I got like dozens of listings on Airbnb. Like, what am I going to do? Or maybe I'm just a newbie and I'm just starting out. And I'm like, this is really cool. Like, and I know for us, for example, we just got new short-term rentals. We're leveraging Airbnb and that's, it's going really well right now. Okay, Mark, what should be my next step and how do I transition? And I know you talked about this because I follow your stuff, Mark, man. I'm listening to you from a distance. You talk about like leaving the calendar open for booking direct, like, what does that look like right now? I'm listening to this. I want to take action as I'm listening to you. I got my account open. What is my next step and how should I transition into this? Yeah. So um, the first thing that everybody should be doing, if you haven't done so already, you need to be putting the foundation in place to get in a structure on your own land. So it's called a PMS, PMP, whatever you want to call it. It's property management software, property management platform. That is what is going to be your bread and butter. That is where all the bookings and all of the data is going to live. Um, they start at free and then you just pay as you scale up. So Do you have examples for the listeners? I know that might yeah, be Yeah, so be there were some recent awards um, in, in, in the US. Uh, they looked at all of them and, and the winners were Hostfully, H-O-S-T-F-U-L-L-Y. I know the team, fantastic people. Uh, they've got Zivu. Zivu is a, is a, is a European-based one, but again, ideal if you've got one to 100. And um, Avantio, again, I think a um, European-based company, but you've got thousands. You could, you could go into any Facebook group right now, any Facebook group, and you could go, who would you recommend for a PMS? You would get five answers from five different hosts. It really is crazy because you've got so many. There's no one shoe fits all, which is, which is frustrating. But um, if you want a resource, um, I interviewed over a hundred hosts because I get asked this question all the time. So I write, in my hospitality community, I interviewed a hundred hosts, pros and cons, and we put it all together in a blog. Uh, you can go to Boostly, B-O-O-S-T-L-Y.co.uk forward slash P-M-S. It's got all the main ones there. Just pick one, pick one, set up and go. The cool thing is, is that you can get started pretty much for free. You can do a trial or a demo with all of them. Um, just, just pick one. It's really simple to move once you've got going. It's, it's, so it's simple. Just, just find one and get one. With this PMS, what you're able to do is you are able then to link up to Airbnb, booking.com, Verbo, go multi-channel, okay? You'll also have the ability to have your own payment gateway. So Stripe, PayPal, people can book with you directly. And this will be where all of your bookings lie. This is where email automations kick in and email is really important. I'll talk about email in a second. Uh, this will be where you go every single day, every single hour. This is where you'll share with your cleaning team or whoever, PMS. And this is really important because there are so many people still to this day and age who don't have one of these. And this is the only way that you're ever going to get people to book direct. This is where we talk about small little changes in your business, kind of five to six figure bumps in your income if you do it right. So first things first, PMS. Second thing, you've got to have a website. This is why I started doing this is because the problem in this industry is that there are so many, many, many people who don't have a website. Secondly, if they've got a website, it's been done by somebody who hasn't got a clue about hospitality. It's, it's you know, it's, I, I, I liken it to when you go and get your hair cut, you know, and, and I'm a bald man, so I can easily say this. Love it. I am not going to go to an all singing, all dancing hair stylist when I get my hair cut. I'm going to go to a barber who can shave my head how I, when I want it. And it's the same with a website. There are some website designers that are good for e-commerce, Shopify and all of that. There are some website designers that are good for PTs and gyms and whatnot. Then there's some that are good for hospitality. You have to go to a specialist because websites are built differently. And there are some website designers that I have seen with hospitality who've got massive egos who just think they're trying to build the Mona Lisa of websites. When at the end of the day, the most core thing that you need to remember with a website especially if it's going to be B2C, as in getting bookings to get them into your units, is who am I? And again, Russell Brunson, who am I? Well, how can I help? What am I selling? How can I sell it? So again, it's really super simple. You get your nice pictures that you've got on your Airbnbs, you put on your website. 
you get very, 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 very clear icons talking about what your business is. You don't fill it with large blocks of text because nobody reads text anymore. They want to see exactly, you know, simplified versions of, of what you do, who you are, who's your customer avatar, which is really important. So uh, if you try and appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody. So the units that you've got, where they are located, who are they best for? Is it best for families, solo travelers? Is it best for X, Y, and Z? Are you creating an experience? So are you specifically catering for vegans? Are you specifically creating for workaways? You've got to know who your ideal target audience is here and you've got to speak to them. And again, it's super simple to do. Um, the most important thing that everybody should do is get a WordPress website. Again, there's so many people who come to me who have got a Squarespace website or a Wix website or they've got a free website with Google and they go, Mark, this website's not driving me bookings. It's because your website is built on the wrong platform to start with. So again, um, it's not because you're doing it wrong. It's just because you don't know better. This is why I do what we do. And this is why I started doing websites in 2018 because there were so many people coming to me saying, my website designer doesn't know what he's doing, but I don't know where to start. So we do that. So if, if you're in that boat, get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Wow. So, and, and go ahead. And I, I, go ahead. All right. So we've got, we've got the PMS. Yep. Again, really simple. You can get started today. You can start setting it up tomorrow. The website, maybe take a week to do. So we're now looking at 10 days into turning into a direct booking machine. The next thing is going to be the most important marketing tactic that you will ever do for your business. And it's the, the, the sole key thing that all the successful businesses have. It's getting your data in one place. So it's an email platform, email marketing. The best one to go for is MailChimp. It's free to get started. And again, you, you pay as you grow, but to get started, it's absolutely free. And what you can do with this really cool tool called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R, you can start to link up your PMS, which is the PMP, linking it to MailChimp, and again, when you've got a booking come in, it will send the information straight to your MailChimp. And then you can start to build your list, which we're talking about remarketing, et cetera. Now, the final thing that I will say, and this is something that everybody has the ability to do, but nobody does it because nobody thinks like this way. Now, I've got so many years of this. I've got 10 years of this. And this is the things that, that you know, my, my big um, inspiration in all of Boostly is because in 2016, I read a book by Tim Ferriss called The Four Hour Work Week. I absolutely adored the guy. I adored the book. I didn't like the title, but the book was amazing. It opened my eyes to so many different things. And, and you know, I basically now just be a human guinea pig. I test all these things. I see what works. I see what doesn't. And then I share it with hospitality owners on, on how they can put it into their business. And this one tip that I'm going to share with you I was testing for so long to get it right, but when it, now I've got it right, I pass it on to others and it works so, 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 so well because this taps into the human psychology. And I'll shut up after this to have a drink and let you talk, but this is one tip that I think everybody needs to do and it's so simple to do because it doesn't cost any money. So you've got your PMP, your PMS, you've got that. You've got your, your website. When a booking comes in, and let's just say a booking comes in through any of the channels, booking.com, Verbo, Airbnb, your PMS will automatically fire off a confirmation email. Okay, it happens every single time. Now, the only way we're going to increase our direct bookings and cut down on the amount of third-party bookings is if we educate our guests the benefit of booking direct. And this is the simplest one that you can do. A guest books, you have got your check-in time. So your check-in time, let's just say for this example, is 3 p.m., okay? So that's when the guests can book in. Now, what you're going to do, and this is so simple, but nobody, people, nobody does it, is you're going to keep your check-in time at 3 p.m. And you're going to go to your OTA, so let's say Airbnb, and you're going to move the check-in time to 6 p.m. So you're going to move it three hours back. Okay, not three hours earlier, three hours back. So when that automated email fires out, it's going to read something like this. And again, the cool thing about these PMS platforms and the email triggers is that it's formulated. So you can put in the name, the date of booking, how much, etc. So it'll be, hey, Ruben, thank you so much for booking a stay with us at the Greenery. Just to confirm your check-in date is the 1st of March. Please read below because we've got important information about your stay. And the first thing you talk about is the check-in time. So I say, because 
uh, if you have booked with us, sorry, directly and in brackets, email, website, phone call, your check-in time is 3 p.m. If you have booked with us via a third party, i.e. Airbnb, Verbo, Expedia Group, your check-in time is 6 p.m. If you would like to discuss anything about your stay, please call me directly. Here's my cell or WhatsApp and put the number in and then just put a, a little bit extra guff, not much, but a little bit extra guff, you know, da, 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 da. Here, here's where you can go and find out more about the area. Boom, 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 boom. But the main thing is that bit at the top, because think about when you go on vacation, especially if you have to fly or drive for more than three or four hours. You know, I've got three boys under the age of eight. The last thing that I want to do after a long drive or a flight and get into my property is have to wait to be able to check in. That is literally the worst thing that I can think of. You want to get to a property, you want to get in, you want to dump the bags, get the takeaway order, or, you know, on the opposite end, if it was me and my buddy, I want to get in, drop the bags, go out, have some fun. So the psychology of it is that people do not like to be, feel like they're having a hard time. So they see that number and they'd call you up and they'll go, Mark, I've seen the email. I want to, I want to get the earlier checking time. How do I do it? And this is where that little bit of sales psychology comes in. Say, so Ruben, no problem at all. I'm more than happy to do that for you. Can you just please confirm your email address? Key, because booking.com, Airbnb don't give you the real email address. You've just got his real email right there on the spot. Can you just also as well confirm your card details? Yep, 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 fantastic. Okay, all I need for you to do, this is the important bit, all I need for you to do is go and cancel your reservation on Airbnb, wherever, for me, fantastic. As soon as you've done that, I'll book you in directly, send you another confirmation email, you're good to go. So the reason why that works, twofold. I can't cancel his booking. If I cancel his booking, my algorithm, super host, all the things, uh -huh. gone. You shouldn't bother, ever, ever cancel. But because the guest does it, it doesn't affect you in any way, shape, or form. The average cancellation from an OTA is 38%, super high. You're just in that little number when they do that. And as well, Bearing in mind now with Airbnb charges, the, the charges have changed. There's no service charge. They don't get a cancellation fee or anything like that. Nothing at all doesn't affect them in any way, shape or form. Number two, I can offer them a little 5% discount to say, hey, just because you're going to book direct, you know what else I'm going to do, Ruben? I'm going to knock 5% off your stay. Fantastic. Thank you. Earlier check-in, 5% off the stay. Brilliant. That's the benefits of booking direct. And it's the same cancellation policy. So again, for them, they get the earlier check-in, they get a little discount. You're saving at least 10% in commission costs, depending on what your commission rate is, and you get the email address and you get the direct booking. And that's super powerful, super simple. You literally have to do it once. You can set it and forget it. And again, if you're going to do answering the phone calls, if, if you don't want to do it, you can get a team member to do it. Super simple, super straightforward. And as soon as you get them on the phone call, that's when the real magic happens, especially if it turns out to be a business guest. Because a business guest will sometime book for maybe two or three nights to test you out. But then the power is when you get them on the phone, say, so why are you coming to the area? Oh, I'm coming in for work. It's going to be maybe a couple of months, maybe a year gig. I'm just looking for places. No problem at all. If you book with us, we'll tell you what we'll do a rate right now. We'll get you booked in. We've got another unit. We can move you to another unit. It's got availability for the whole year. That's when you're talking about big, big bookings by getting them on the phone, by treating them like a human and doing those little tactics. Man, I am up. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, guys, if you're not, I mean, the, the notes in for this show are going to be bonkers. I mean, this is amazing. I, you should see my sheet right now. And it started with a simple question of like, why is it important for you to start focusing on booking direct? And Mark gave us a blueprint how you can transition in, which I love because, you know, told you to get your PMS, get, get a website that's done by a professional. If you're going to get a haircut, get it by a barber. Uh, and then, and then he even talked, you know, going back to the, now the whole connecting the communication, the proximity, the, 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 the touch point with the actual customer to actually identify why they're coming. I think that's so powerful. And then getting the email and getting them to come into your ecosystem that you're in control of. I mean, that's just, I mean, so many gems in there. I'm like literally grinning. If you guys can't hear it in my voice right now, grinning from ear to ear, this is golden, uh, complete blown away. I'm, I want to talk about what you just talked about. And that it was, again, great segue. You're a pro at this without, I don't even think you knew what you did there, but you talked about the business. You talked about the avatar. And 
you know, I heard you talk about, I looked into your stuff about, you know, one pagers, right? Websites, right? That you talk about creating one for Avery listing. Let's talk about a key component in marketing that I talk about when people come to me, right? You guys know Invested Talent producing this show. That's my company. That's my team. People say, hey, I want to create content. Hey, I want to, I, I want to build my brand. And I always start with, you know, who are you trying to serve, right? Mm-hmm. In in hospitality, I mean, I may, made the mistake as a new new recent investor in the short term rental space and the vacation rentals. It was like, well, we're just going to serve people who need to stay. No, no, no. Let's take a layer deeper. So, let's talk about that. Can you can you give insight as to what kind of avatars are out there? Because what I'm doing, I'm setting you up for the slam dunk here. I want to talk about how how you can actually, you know, how your company. And how yourself, you've seen how you can really bring someone into a funnel. Because I'm assuming maybe a travel nurse or maybe a business guy, is it the same landing page? Maybe it's not. Maybe is the messaging the same? Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I want to get into that. So first, maybe some of the listeners may not be familiar with the term avatar. Mm. What is that? Why is it important to have? And then let's, let's, let's go back into that whole sequence of that messaging. Maybe let's see how it maybe it impacts it. Help, yeah. help us out there, Mark. So, um, Avatar is basically your ideal guest, your ideal customer. You know, if you could just imagine right now the ideal person to walk through your door. And again, you may be somebody who's got 100 units or plenty of different units, different things. It's per location. It really is. Unless you've got every single unit is exactly the same in the same block, in the same area, same location. So what you're what you're thinking here is, okay. so here's what I've got. Here's, um, here's what I have available. Here's the location where I am, who would be my ideal guest to walk through the door. And again, I bring it back to my, my belongings, our farm stay business. We are in the middle of nowhere. You know, we, um, we, you know, when me and my wife got married, the weekend was called wedding in wellies. It's called wedding in wellies for a reason. It rains a lot. You know, it's like, it's proper country. So we are not going to appeal to people who are looking to come to our area to go on nights out and get drunk in the local town. It's just not our avatar. It doesn't mix. We appeal to families. We appeal to those that want to get away from, from, from the city. It's proper rural, you know? So, Again, think about where you're based. Think about what the amenities are. Think about what is nearby. Think about what you have to offer. So again, it is so different for every single body listening, which is really cool. Because again, if you try and appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody. You've only got a certain amount of, of, of um, um, uh, amenities or you know availability that you can give. So don't try and appeal to everybody you know what i mean and and this is how you know you you find you know find your tribe find your network you know you find all of you find your ideal guest and again i've done this with hospitality and i've done this with with boostly you know i could have quite easily started up a website design company back in 2016 and just said hey i'm doing websites so what who are you who are you compared to these millions of other website designers in yeah, the world yeah. i came in saying no you know i help hospitality owners who want to increase their bookings. Great. So, you know, I've gone, I've gone a level deeper. So, and you, and you know what, and, and, and I want to build on that and, and, and make a comment on it. Cause you, you could usually say we make websites for real estate people. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's, it's a layer deeper. It's, like it's, we, it's, we, go, we go deeper. Yeah. So we, we, yeah. we keep going down. So I, I say, I get my niche and I double on the niche and yes. you're the same and everybody should be the same. So it's like, okay, so how do I discover who my avatar is? Who do I just discover who my, you know, my, um, my ideal guest is. And, and, and a lot of the times the clue is in the data success leaves clue. So if you've been doing this for maybe a season, or you've been doing it for two seasons, Perfect, because you can go back on everybody that's booked and you can look at, you know, where they're from. And again, with the data that they're giving you, where where are they from? So the 80-20 rule is what you're always looking to do here. So what 20% of things that are showing that make up for 80% of your revenue or your bookings? So are you getting a lot of couples? Are you getting a lot of families? Are you getting a lot of solo people? Are they all from one area? Where are they all from? Okay, they're from the city. I'm in a rural, so they're in the city. They're coming to stay with me. What are they asking? Go through all your messages. Go through all your emails. Look for that 80, 20. Look for the most frequently asked questions. You know, are they, are they all asking for where the USB ports are? Are they all asking for like how quick the Wi-Fi is? 
oh shit, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting a real good idea here. You know, these are people who are from the city that are coming out to their rural areas, but they are asking for quick Wi-Fi, they're asking for USB ports, and, you know, they're, they're staying for longer. I've got a workcation ideal audience right here. So what can I do to my property to cater for them? And most importantly, when I get all of this, I'm not going to stay mute. I'm going to go on my social medias. I'm going to go on my website. I'm going to go on my listings and I'm going to present the information to them based on what my ideal guest wants to see. And this is the key is that when you load up your Airbnb, don't do what everybody does and just blurts out 40 pictures, 40 is too many. What you want to do is that first image wants to be your USP, your unique selling photo. And Airbnb, you can mimic, you can replicate it for booking, verbo, social media, your own website. That first picture is your USP, the one that's going to attract your ideal guest in. So if you have, if you have got an audience, your ideal guest is going to be that workcation. And workcation is so big right now because of the way of the world, because the big companies, Twitter, Google are saying to literally their employees, listen, everybody can work from home. People are in cities or they're in the same four walls that they look at every single day. They're getting paid good wage, credit cards, everything's are getting paid off. They're getting paid a good wage and they're going, well, hang on a second. I don't need to be in this small little box apartment in the middle of wherever. I can be traveling while doing this. So why not make it a thing. If your thing is workcation, double down on it. So look at your property. All right. So how, where can I put in a desk? Where can I put in like a sort of a working area? What can I do here? Can I get more USB sockets in, more plug sockets in? Can I maybe get a printer? Can I maybe get X, Y, and Z? What can I get in to make life easier? What do they want? And you, what you've got to do is you've got to take your hat off as a business owner. And you've got to put your hat on as your ideal guest. And you've got to maybe go and stay in your property. You know, and go, right, if I'm thinking like this, what do I need to do? And it's so super important. And then the thing is that when you look to market it, the first thing that you explain and you show is speaking to your ideal guest. The words that you use is speaking to your ideal guest. And you may have to go and hire a copywriter for this. Somebody that is paid to write magical words that makes a user take action. Uh, but Fiverr, Upwork, you name it. There's some amazing sites now that you can go and find very talented people um, at your disposal where you don't have to try and look locally. You can look worldwidely for this. But again, you, you've got to got to do it. And it begins and ends with your website and your listing sites and how you talk and act online. And it's, and it's, and it's so crucial. But again, everybody just goes to the very like, standard answer is, What's your ideal audience? Whoever gives me money. And that's not the way to do it. Mm. I think that's so key. I love, I love, man, you're dropping in gems. I, I think you brought it full circle because you're essentially the PMS. And I think it's so important that what you're saying is because you're also not getting this kind of data with the OTAs, which therefore means you're not giving yourself a real compass of the direction that you're going in because you don't really know who you're serving. But so the more information you have, the better you can serve the people, the better you can give a better experience, the more bookings you will get, the more you have control of your data. And it's kind of like this ongoing thing. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but that's what it is. It's a feedback loop really. Yeah. So it's kind of like implementing right away so that you can have the data to then better serve um, your, your, your avatar. And then again, get more bookings. So yeah. interesting. So, wow. So you get all this, you're creating these digital assets. You're, you're, you're creating a better experience. You talk, we talked about the USP, which I think was really unique. And that's a unique selling point, right? On the landing page. I think it's key with pictures um, really quick on a high level for the wording. Cause I know we talk about optimizing listings and, um, and what I really like too, is how you can actually, um, showcase um, your your property on one of uh, your websites. And that's something that occurred to me like, hey, like Airbnb doesn't have videos. Like maybe you can incorporate videos, right? Like what do you think <clears throat> based on to someone who's listening, who's already bought in, like they're drinking the cooler. They're like, first, they're like, where do I sign? Well, we're going to have that in the show notes. But for you at a high level, you've looked at thousands and helped thousands of people. 
Uh, what do you think is, is another pro of booking direct and with the digital real estate that you have, what can you utilize that maybe some other places don't, don't have? What are you putting on these landing pages? Are you putting on other reviews? Are you putting on videos? Are you putting things that keywords such as what we talked about that cater more to your avatar? Like give us a kind of like an overview, a thousand foot view of like what this kind of landing page would offer that maybe an OTA doesn't have. Cause I think that would really help us bring it full circle. Well, the, the main thing that you have to do that everybody needs to do on the website that obviously the OTAs aren't doing is you need to talk about the benefits of somebody doing business with you directly. It's, it's so key. But, you, you know, websites get complicated by website designers when a lot of the time you just have to lay it out in simple terms. And there's a book that I read last year and I devoured it. It was called Story Brand by Donald Miller. And the, and the big theme of the book, and he's got a podcast and he's, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's a speaker and he's got courses, is that if you confuse, you lose. And that really made me sort of take that step back in what I was doing and what we were creating. And then most importantly, what others were doing when I was doing the reviews. And so, okay, so confuse, you lose. What does that mean? Well, again, this, this comes back to it, big blocks of text. People don't read big blocks of text anymore. So you confuse them. You've lost them. When somebody lands on your website, the first thing that they, they want to look for is how can they actually give you money? If you haven't got a very clear button saying book now, book here, check availability, you confuse, you lose. And the most important thing that everybody needs to do on a website is you need to clearly state the benefits of booking direct. So whatever that may be, better rates, earlier check-in, later check-out, a welcome hamper, whatever it may be, the incentives, because a lot of the time people uh, misconstrue this as a revenue, as a money thing. It's not. A lot of the time people aren't bothered about saving a couple of dollars here and there, but what they will always want is better incentives. And if you want the proof in the pudding, and we've already given them, you know, a, a mention, the big hotels, you know, like the Marriott's and the Hilton's, et cetera, look at what they do. Look at what their marketing is. In 2018, the Hilton paid a lot of money to Anna Kendrick, big movie star, to go and do some adverts for them. And the whole thing was don't click around. You go on the website, you look at the benefits of booking direct with them. And they, they state it, you know, free Wi-Fi, free breakfast. You know, you get part of a, a, a rewards program when you book direct, when you book directly with us. So if they're doing it and their multi-million, multi-million dollar industry what, what they're doing, why aren't we mimicking it? Because success leaves clues. And this is literally what, 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 what I've done is for the last five years, I've just looked at what Airbnb, Booking.com, Marriott, Hilton, they spend millions. They've got countless of research teams. Airbnb have got teams upon teams for every single step of the customer journey. And they spend millions on it. I just go in and go, right, you're doing that well, you're doing that well, for free. I take it, I gather it, and I put it into this little boostly ball, and I just show everybody what they're doing, and I put it into our talk so any small business owner can, can do it. So what we need to do, we need to educate our guests. We need to explain it clearly so we don't confuse them. And at the end of the day, you've got to make it stupidly simple for anybody to find you and then book with you. And if you get any of that wrong, then you've confused them and then you've lost them. And when they lose, they go. 87% of people have said if they have a bad user experience on a website or in a booking platform, they leave and they never come back. Best case scenario, best worst case scenario is they leave and they go to Airbnb and book with you via their channel. That's the best worst. The worst case scenario is they leave, they go onto another channel and they book with somebody else and you've lost revenue completely. So again, it's, it's, it's little things that you can do that will move that needle massively and it will have five, six figure bumps on your revenue. So I'm curious, uh, is this great point, and I want to, you know, be the uh, devil's advocate, but before I do, I want to also add uh, such a great resource, resource that you mentioned, the story brand. Another thing that it talks about in there too, which is interesting, what Donald Miller does a good job of talking about is that a lot of us who are business owners make, our, make ourselves the heroes as opposed to being the guys. And I think it's just so, the way it's prefaced, it's so important that like, listen, they're the ones who are staying there. They're the hero. You're guiding them as the host. Mm -hmm. So make the incentive about them, not you. Not like we've had over 
no, no, no. What's in it for me, the person who's going to stay there. So I, I think just tying those two pieces, first of all, fantastic book. I'm so glad you mentioned it, but I think even having that as, as a point, um, is really is going to be key now the one thing i i I got because you know we keeping it real in the lab here we you know it's not just all good i think mark you're killing it but i'm listening to this i'm like but mark like but people are familiar with these like that little like red icon that you know that looks like an a and the booking.com and like from a marketing standpoint people there's a comfort level with familiarity right if i've never seen your site before so i'm curious if you touch on this is there a banner that said as seen on Airbnb booking.com. Do you do that kind of stuff? Do you, or do you completely try to like, Nope, this is like, I'm curious. Does the human brain is I'm familiar with this. I've seen it before. I'll book it. Like, what is your say on that being the expert in this space? And maybe I, this is a point that no, it's a, it's a great question. It. And it is one, you know, when, when, when I come on podcasts or interviews, you know, and I talk about direct booking, a lot of people, a lot of the times will say, well, what's the point? They have got market share. They've got, they spend billions on their brand and their advertising. Like booking.com and Expedia, they are some of the top 10 spenders in the world on advertising. And that's not just hospitality, the world. Okay. So they spend a lot of money to make sure that they are top of mind. Mm. Right. And let's bring it more closer to home with, um, let's just say detergent, detergent, laundry detergent. All right. You've got, you've got no. <laughs> You've got no affiliation. You've got no whatever to them. But just look at what they do. You're in the car. Radio comes on. Radio ad. It's an ad. Billboards. You'll see billboards. Advertising. Newspaper. Newspaper ads. Social media. Social media ads. You'll see literally every step of the way, you will see them advertising. So why are they doing it? They're doing that to stay top of mind. Okay? They're doing top of mind. Because when you walk into that... um, department store, wherever it may be. And in America, you love to have choice. There are all of the brands, what they are hoping for at that point, your eye will meet something that they will recognize because you're top of mind and you'll just naturally lean into that and grab it. Same thing with what Airbnb, booking.com and all of these guys, big, big guys are doing because it's top of mind. They bring back brand affiliation. They have got very, 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 very clever marketing teams. They have, they have mind warped so many people to think that it is, you get the best rates, right? You get the best incentives when you book and they call it book directly with them. They are even now turning the book direct and saying book directly with us and you get the best rates, the best incentives. And it's nonsense. It's wrong. The best cancellation policy. It's wrong. Any host will turn around and say, it is wrong. I will offer you the this exact same cancellation policy. I will offer you the exact same rates. I'll even give you better incentives. But the problem is, comes back to the very, 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 very start of what I said, is that we are very fortunate in this world, in this industry, that we can open a business and we can list it on a couple of websites and are guaranteed to get income. The problem when you do that, you get lazy. You get lazy, you get compliant, and you, and you over-rely on them. And then you fall into that trap of going, ah, sorry, they'll just get the book in anyway. Now, I said at the very, 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 very start is that I am not Mr. Ant- I am not Mr. O- Anti-OTA. You need to be listed on all of these platforms, yeah. all of them. You cannot be not on them because they spend so much money getting the eye level to it, all right? But the trick is, is that you've got to make them work for you and not the other way around. That little email trick that I threw in in the middle, that is all banking on the fact that they've booked via an OTA. So I don't mind if a booking comes in through an OTA the first time around, because I'm very confident in my converting abilities and the converting abilities that I teach. But most importantly, and this is really important, if a guest books the first time with an OTA, and if they come back and stay with you again and they book with an OTA, you have failed. Mm. A guest should never, ever, ever rebook via an OTA. They should always be booking with you directly. They should never have a little say in it. And to be fair to the OTAs, and I've been sort of like doing my own little Trojan horse with booking.com. I've been working my way from the outside in because of the speaking events that I get invited to now. And, you know, I've got to know quite a lot of people at booking.com. And they are also, they will say to me, directly say, Matt, we, you know, we're not naive. We know that after the first booking, second time around, that guest should be nowhere near us. The problem is, is that they are preying on the fact that you 
do not know what you're doing. They, they are preying on the fact that they, you don't know marketing tactics. This is why one of the most popular videos that I have ever put together and put out on YouTube is a really, really clever one because the OTAs don't know that we're doing this. And part of the contract that you sign when you tick off the T's and C's that no one ever reads, in there, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, they all say the same thing. When you sign the T's and C's, it says, we will advertise on your brand name. We will advertise on your business brand name on Google, you know, which falls under so many copyright laws, but we literally sign it off. Just go, oh, there you go, do it. And now why are they doing that? They know in this world, in this industry, if, if somebody has a good time and they go and recommend somebody, like we said at the very start, 2% of two people will at least come in and check it out. Say that we're in the office, me and you, and Ruben, have you a good time when you went away? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Where did you go? Oh, I went here. Where did you stay? Boom. Recommend it? Yeah. First thing I'm doing, Google, typing in the brand name in the location. Now, you should think from a marketing point of view that if someone puts in my business name in my location, what should be the first thing that come up? The first thing should be my website. No, because how does Google work? Google is a business. It's not fair. The top four slots are reserved for ads. Then it's the maps. Then it's rich snippets. So before it even comes to the organic, you're right down here. And what are Google, what are booking.com doing? They are bidding on your brand name in Google. So they are getting in. Now, the really cool thing is, is that they don't realize that we know this, but I figured this out really early, really quickly. So I now show it as part of one of my training. If you go to boostlead.co.uk forward slash bid on brand, it's a pretty link. It will take you to a YouTube video. Watch it, learn it, implement it. Because this is one of the best ways of fighting fire with fire. I show you how you can bid on your own brand name on Google Ads. And because it's such a unique phrase, you spend pennies, literally pennies. It's not like you're typing in holiday accommodation in here. That's a very short keyword, very popular keyword. You'll spend dollars because it's your business name in your location. And because it's very unique, you'll spend pennies. And again, all that we're doing to come back a long way around of answering your question is we're fighting fire with fire. We want to be at every touch point in every potential part of a, of a, a future potential guest or a guest that's rebooking. And again, it starts with that. You couple to it, email marketing, you add in, throw in text messaging, WhatsApp in, voice noting, whatever you want to do. You throw in social media, you throw in being a scrappy business owner by being proactive, not reactive. If you can do that enough, you don't have to get everybody. You just have to get the majority of your ideal guests to see it and book with you. Because if you do that and if you educate them, they will never, ever, 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 ever rebook the, these OTAs with you again. They may book somewhere else via an OTA, but not you. But it's on you to be proactive. Yeah, no, I love that part where you say that because that's what stood out to me throughout our entire talk. It's like, educating them of why it's an incentive for them to book with you and then educating them on why in the future they should continue to go this route. And I think that's the best thing, uh, you know, to do is educate people you do business with on how to do business with you. Like that's, that's really, um, wow. That's, that's plus, real. plus as well, just yeah. to, sorry to jump in, but it's like, it's keeping the money in the local economy. You know, mm. this is a, this is another problem. This is why the high street is dying massively all over the world because they haven't they haven't communicated that that message enough about the this is why you have to go into your local high street to do this shopping don't just go on amazon because if you do you're literally pulling money out of the local economy you know that's that's wages that's jobs that's all of that thing and it's the same with this it's like literally if you book with us directly this is not only impacting us it's impacting the local area so it's a win 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 not just a win win it's a win 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 a win you get the best rates, the best incentives, da, 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 da. Win, we get your book in so we don't have to then spend big commission to the OTAs. And it's a win for the local area because then we can reinvest that money into more cleaning staff, more X, more Y, more Z, da, 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 da. Win, win, win. And if we can transfer that message, then we will win. We will get what we want and I will get what I want, which is the OTAs to pull down their fees. I want to get more power and I want to help more, 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 more people get treated like, like partners. That's my ultimate goal for 
all of this why i do podcast interviews here because this is going to sit evergreen for years to come so why i do a daily podcast this is why i do coaching and training and websites and content creation and all of these things is because it's all geared towards that one goal so here's to that well i salute you to that man and 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 before you get out of here uh, and, and sneak out of here with all the gems that you left. And first of all, thank you for leaving such a deep imp- imprint of, of what you're doing. And then again, a blueprint for others to follow. And like you said, it's that's why I do these shows. It's just that this will last a lifetime, a lifetime beyond, right? I mean, beyond us, hopefully, and 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 impact somebody. And whether, regardless of whether systems change or not, which I think is what I really do, do appreciate about it, is you can implement this because. This is, this is something that can help any business as well. If you really think about it, we talked about other industries being impacted as well. So, um, so before we, we, you know, you sneak out of here and with all the value that you drop, I want to get to a core rapid fire question real quick, just because you're such an insightful guy. You've, you've educated yourself. You've been a practitioner. You've done it. You're helping others do it. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, what gets the clock ticking behind closed doors? You, you, you talked about some resources already with Don Miller, et cetera. What is, you know, another f- a favorite book of yours that you know, kind of has gotten uh, the gears uh, turning in maybe in the recent times that you'd like to okay, share with us? Right behind me. Ah! So this one, Tools of ah, Titan Tools of by Titan. Tim Ferriss. So uh, we both like podcasts, right? We, we yeah. both listen, we both indulge in podcasts. And when this book came out, I, I had to get it because, and, and this is the, I'm writing a book this year. It's called The Book Direct Playbook. And this was the big inspiration for it because really? you don't, you don't open this book. You don't open this book and read it from 100 to the end. You don't go cover to cover. You come in, you go, okay, so I want to find out about Wim Hof or X, Y, and Z. You dip into a chapter, you read it, and then you, you do, you, 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 know, you, you go and find another one. And this is exactly the type of book that, that I'm writing is that it's, it's packed full of all the tips that I've shared here and, and more so. so it goes through every single core part of it but again i specifically state in it that you're not going to just go from page one to wherever you're going to come in you're going to find a chapter whether it's email marketing whether it's pms whether it's customer avatar whether it's social media whether it's pricing whatever it may be you read it and then there's going to be a companion course so you're going to go and you can even go on a companion course a free course do watch like an over shoulder training and then you go and do so we've got get it done sessions GID, get it done sessions. This is a big thing. You know, the, 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 the thing that gets me going, the thing that why I keep on going is because there'll be somebody who will listen to this podcast, who will listen to it and instantly put some into practice. These tactics and tips that I, that I share don't cost money, don't cost a lot of money. They are not overcomplicated. They are simple and you can put into practice right now. And I absolutely love it. When someone sends me a message on Instagram, I had it today. I was on another podcast a couple of weeks ago. They sent me a message saying, I did this and it resulted in this. And that is the best type of Instagram message that that you can get. But the, the key is this. And this is the trouble with apps like Clubhouse and just being endless and endless of content is that you can quite easily just sit and consume, 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 and you never do anything. Yeah. What I want people to do, and I just want one person to do this, is you just listen to this, you figure out that one thing that you can do right now. So this is the thing that I learned from Tim Ferriss. He he, he talks about this a lot, whether it's a course, a book, um, or whatever, podcast, YouTube video, at the end of watching it, he'll stop it and he'll make a note on one thing that he can do right now, whatever that may be, and he'll implement it. And that's what I've been doing since 2017. And now I teach it. So when I, when, when, you're listening to this, whoever you may be, whatever it, whatever tactic, whether it's the email one, whether it's the bid on brand one, whether it's getting a PMS, whether it's getting a website, whatever it may be, implement it, figure it out, implement it, and then let me know how, how you get on because that fires me up more than anything else because it shows that we are slowly, slowly working towards that big, that big goal. Oh, man. And to any of you guys who are uh, listening to this, uh, what he held up was Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, which is a book that I love as well, because I people ask me, you, you know, what's, who's your mentor? I do have a mentor and I have a specific business mentor and all that, but I have many mentors and that's that book right there. You can just tap into it, go to the table of contents and like two or three pages, sometimes four pages of insight. And you're like, damn. And I put that into my mir- my miracle morning, a little morning routine. So I would highly recommend that to anybody. I mean, 
look at this man this is say i feel like we're twins <laughs> this is my aspiring twin he's a he's he's a you know, hundred steps ahead, but I, I love, again, it just shows your core values are there. Fantastic book. What is the best habit that serves you, uh, serves you every day, uh, uh, Mark, that you feel is, uh, is, is uh, beneficial to your day-to-day? So we spoke about him off air and it's something that's come into my world very recently, but um, I have my own little miracle morning and it's a bit hard to do it um, consistently with three boys under the age of eight, but part of my morning is uh, meditation. And then I do a little, little, little tiny bit of gratitude. But then what I do, I got my waterproof headphones and I'll put on an Evan Carmichael uh, video from YouTube, one of his like aspirations one. And it's very cool how he does it and how he, how he brings in other people and whatnot, Mel, like Mel uh, Robbins and all of those. And I'll put that in the shower. And I tell you what, that is one of the best things. It gets you so switched on for the day makes you feel good for the day you know if you've not slept very well you know or whatever might be going on in your head you put on one of them and you feel fan- fantastic so by the time you've got out the shower brushed your teeth and all the things got dressed i feel fantastic absolutely fantastic so yeah i i, I definitely um uh, uh, attribute that to the fact and you need me some of those what are those waterproof headphones you got what are those well it's just uh, the beats the uh, the power oh. beats yeah, okay, you know, I didn't even know they were waterproof. I, I, I definitely need me a set. Okay, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you can put them in the shower. That's fine. You know, yeah, the, power, the power boots. Yeah, yeah. The, the fantastic. Yeah, so. Okay, well, I'm on it. I'm on it. Best tool, tool that helps you excel throughout the throughout your day. Is there a tool? Could be a notepad so, application. Yeah. Anything? Well, it was this <laughs> pen and paper, and then I got a recommendation, and I literally got it in the post today. So I got, I got this, this is so cool. So a pen and paper, this is basically just something that sits on your desk. Oh, it's like a little mini whiteboard. Is that what it is? Tiny little mini whiteboard that just Mm. sits, sits like under, obviously if you're audio, this isn't going to be the best light, but it just sits under your desk here and you can just make all all the notes. So I put my to-do list on there. And and, and this is a big tactic, uh, one that I've learned is that you write down your to-do list. So I, I use any.do and that synced into all my you know, Apple devices and I'll, I'll add things in there. But when I actually come to get to work, what I'll do is I'll write them down because there's nothing more satisfying than scribbling out something on your to-do list. And there's a, there's a, there's a system that I learned a long time ago, but I would tribute because I get a lot of stuff done. So I only work 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. The weekends are off, totally off. Wednesday, I put the boy to bed, my baby, the baby to bed. And so I just do a, a little couple of hours after he's asleep. So I only work six to 10 and that's it. And the reason why I can get so much done in such a short space of time is the system that I learned um, a long time ago. And it's called the 531. You can Google it. Dan Meredith, 531. It's a YouTube video. And the, the way that it works is that We've all got a mountain of a to-do list. We, we always have one. It doesn't matter who or where you are in the world. You've always got a mountain of to-do. Sunday night, what you do, you can either print that off or you can just write it all out. And you're going to give every single one of those things, you've got to do a number. One, two, three. Number one is business and time critical. Only you can do. Only you can do. That's number one. Number two, you will give something on the list that's important, but it's not not really important, not for now, or you could potentially outsource it to somebody, a team member or hire someone on Fiverr at work. And number three is something you should definitely not be doing. You should be getting that off your plate, off your system. So then what you do, you go to your Monday to your Friday and you get all of the number ones and you should really realistically just have five number ones and you'll just uh, allocate one number one to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And again, that's business and time critical. And then what you'll do is you'll scatter the rest of your time, your working time with a couple of twos, three should be nowhere near it. So then what you'll learn right here by doing this is that number, the first thing you'll learn is that you should be outsourcing more than what you realize. You can't do it all yourself. If you spin all the plates yourself, whatever. But also as well, you'll be focusing on the tasks that are most important. Instead of doing loads of reactive tasks, you you ended up doing the proactive tasks because you'll be the business manager, the business development manager, the, the taking the business forward. And then that, is, is literally the most important system and tool that I have learned to get in so much done in such a short space of time. And again, I've mentioned it before, Fiverr or Upwork, there's some amazing tools that you can get people all over the world to do literally any task. And you know, if, if, um, if anything that I learned back in 2016 by reading the Tim Ferriss book, 
um, for our work week. It's the power of outsourcing, how to outsource properly. And, and yeah, it's really helped me just really focus on those ones and get rid of those twos and threes. Wow. And, and I'm curious as it go into that, how, um, what is the dynamic? This is more of a personal question uh, that you have now. Is it, are you still uh, building a short-term rental portfolio or are you just focusing on Boostly? Are you doing both? And like, what does that look like at a high level of your, your team? Because I know you're serving so many people with the Boostly and all that. So what does that look like in your world? I'm curious. Yeah, so I've got like three strands to Boostly. So we've got um, Boostly Academy, which is training, mm -hmm. Boostly Content Creator, which is where um, we create content for hosts, social media content, email content for hosts. And then we've got the, the Boostly website. So um, the 60-30-10 split would be 60% website, 30% academy, and then 10% is content creator. So I have pretty much now sacked myself from the website business. So I've got a team. I've got a, a guy who I, who I joint venture on the websites. He does most of the, 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 the new business calls. Here we've got a team that literally do everything. All I am, I'm just the mouth. I'm just saying Boostly website, Boostly website, Boostly website. The, 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 the training that takes up, um, you know, an hour of my time a week because I do an hour coaching call on a Tuesday. We do a group, group call for, for, for the academy people. And then the content creator, I outsource all of that to an agency. They create the content, they, they, they put it in and my team works around that. So most of my time right now is creating my own content, talking, you know, doing podcasts, doing, doing, um, podcasts like here interviews and just sort of spreading spreading the word um that is what my normal day-to-day -day looks like right now o outside of boostly um we have just as in the last couple of weeks you know i mentioned that we put the farm up for sale in 2017 yes. that just got sold for wow. a combination of just crazy events covid and you know crappy estate agents it just sold so that's like that's crazy. Like, there's no congratulations. Oh, it's business. Yeah, it was awesome. And it's more congratulations to my mum and dad because they're able to properly retire. They've got a nice little cool little house in Scarborough by the beach. It's, it's amazing, you know, and um, I am looking to get back in. I've got an idea on what I'm going to do, but uh, we're not there yet. But when I, when I do have it, it'll be pretty cool on, on how we're going to get in because it's going to be all virtually. So it's all, all virtual because our passion is travel. And we are always, always going to travel. And we're going to keep traveling around, around the world as much as we possibly can because we want to show the boys the world as much, you, as, as, much as we possibly can. You said it's going to be all what, Mark? All, all rental? Virtual. All virtual. Yeah. All, all virtual. virtual. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So all, all of it will be virtual. However, we do get back into the accommodation world. But yeah. But yeah so um, it's weird at the moment. I'm like that in between. But um, it's, it's all boostly, it's all helping, it's all working. But I, I do honestly think that my, my unique selling point for me to, to host when I first started was that I cut my teeth for a long time, cleaning, doing bunk beds, changing, changing bins, you know, doing yeah. all that, living it, living it literally for so long. I knew every single in and out of, of hospitality. I knew, you know, all the different factors. And then when I could couple that with simple, effective marketing techniques and I could explain it, using my coaching background, it's, it's amazing of the things that you do and how you do them and when they come into your world, that they seem to just all lay out in one way that you can just, even if it doesn't affect you right there and then. Like 2017, I did, a, I did a short course, book writing course. It came to nothing. I put a couple of books on Amazon under a different pen name. It did nothing. You know, it cost me more money than, but now actually, I actually made. But the skills that I learned in 2017 doing in that short book writing course, I have easily transpired into this year writing my first proper book because I know the structure. I know the system. I know what I need to do. I know what it looks like. I know how it works. I know exactly how to get it onto Amazon. I know exactly how to format it for Kindle and all of those things. But, it, and then it's again, it's like the soccer coaching back in 2002, back in 2000, 1999, when I first started doing my coaching badges, the skills that I learned coaching, I can put it into now into into you know how to speak to people how to uh, how to relay something to somebody how to explain it you know without being aggressive or overbearing or you know being a dick you know i can i can put it into words that they can understand and i can put it simply and again I, and i couple all of that to 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 it, it's, it's crazy of the skills that you pick up along the like working at yelp doing that that you can now yeah. all, all merge together so yeah it's it's uh it's it's awesome and you know uh, there's been a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, but you know, it's, um, 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm literally just getting started. So I know, I know. I'm so excited to see it. I'm so excited that we get a chance to be a part of that journey uh, that you've cultivated and that you created for yourself. And that where I was going with that question was, just, you know, I kind of see, uh, you know, like when I say like a hundred steps ahead, I, I, I still, I see that's so interesting because I have an agency and I'm in the real estate space too, but it's interesting because people use, the, especially the vacation rentals as a business model to like grow their business. But, you know, people like ourselves, we have kind of agencies and, and that, that kind of supplement that group. And I'm just thinking as long-term as I'm thinking, I'm like, hmm, like what I want to create or have another entity kind of be the property management and grow a portfolio and then have a business in addition to the short-term rentals that you would own? Or do I like, I kind of just think about that along the way and how to tie it together. That's what I was like asking. Well, the, like the, you. the thing, that, the thing yeah. that I learned and I got taught right at the very start was that how can it, whatever you create or whatever yeah. you bring in as an income stream, how can you fit it in the ecosystem of what you're currently doing? Yeah. Like vertical integration, right? Yeah. So it's like with Boostly, um, We've got websites, website design, but yeah. the ecosystem, it fits in because it creates, it creates websites for the hospitality owners that I'm coaching. The first other thing I did was coaching. So then it was like, right, we've got the coaching and we've got the web design. The web design fits in nicely into the ecosystem because it directly impacts the people that we're coaching. So it's like, I can, I can show you all the marketing tax and tools, but if your website's crap, it's not going to work. So it's like, they both, they both marry up. And then again, two years ago, I had so many hosts come into me in the group and in the community saying, we know we need to post on social media every day, but we just don't know what to post. So I created content creator and we it fit into the ecosystem. So it's, it's all merged into one. And if I ever do create, well, the book, there's another income stream. It just fits nicely into the ecosystem. I think for you, what would be cool would be, I, I personally believe that more hosts should have podcasts. I think that podcasts is on unbelievable marketing tool that people haven't tapped into which i think i hope and i wish that clubhouse is the gateway to this i see so many of my hosts so many of my members who are opening and starting clubhouse rooms so they're getting the confidence to be able to do it now how cool would it be if you could start up your podcast or a podcast for your local area and you talk about the local area things to do reasons why people visit you can interview people guests that have been in the technology is there and people are getting more brave to do. So your agency with your background and what you're doing, it's like, well, we can help you get a podcast for your business. And again, at the moment when everybody's zigging, when those that can zag and start doing something like this, it's, it, it's a PR, it's a PR beauty that newspapers and everybody journalists would love this. And again, it's just a case of fitting it into the ecosystem. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, amazing opportunity. Wow. I'm so glad. Look at that. Get, get you on here. You're not only helped the audience, you helped me and you give me some personal gems, which I really appreciate. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for the insight, the knowledge. We stayed over time. You stayed over time and how valuable your time is. I don't think that I'm a, a one on your calendar by any means. So I'm very honored that you're able to, 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 to squeeze in my more pleasure. time. But seriously, man, this is like, um, I, I'm so inspired by you. I love what you're doing. And best believe we'll find a way to work together. I'm actually going to connect with you offline about that. And uh, I'm so excited, man, of what's next for you. But uh, where can the people find out more? I know you dropped a lot of links while you were talking. Yeah. Tell the people, the listeners, where we can find out more about what you and your team are doing for others so the best place, if you want to just go just all in and just have a look, boostly.co.uk, B-O-O-S-T-L-Y.co.uk. That's the best place to start. You just literally go on there, put your email in, and I will send you five training videos on how you can start to increase your direct bookings. Super simple. If you want to send me a message, Instagram is the best place. I love Instagram. I'm on there. I'm on there. It's the only app that's on my phone. I don't even have Clubhouse on my phone. I took it off. I had to go on the iPad. I was yeah. just spending too much time. So Instagram is the only app that's on my phone. It's at Boostly UK. There's some American company got Boostly. So I've got Boostly UK, B-O-O-S-T-L-Y UK. Feel free. My, my DMs are open. Send me a message. Ask me questions. If you, know, if you, want, um, you want to share wins. I love getting wins in my inbox. So yeah, please, please do that. And if you want to go any further, just send me a message, uh, website design, all of that. Just if you start a Boostly, you, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine on, on your journey. So yeah, please do come over and say hi.
Definitely. We'll make sure we include that in the show notes. If you're driving, keep your hands on the wheel and make sure you tune in after. And uh, if you're actively listening right now, make sure you follow uh, again, um, Mark here on Clubhouse, Mark on Instagram. We'll have all that in the show notes. And just like that, we are out.